That's why as I've gotten older, um, older, not old, um, I am, what am I, 68, okay. As we get older, we realize the things that I'm going to apply in the scripture are the things I can see there and I can work out and understand. Somebody teaches another doctrine, got a lot of points there, and where in the heck did that come from? I can't see it reversed. Well, I'm generally not going to use it at all. You need something so that we can come to things that we really grasp in their own. We can then use them and apply. And these things, at least for me, I can work out in these texts and other texts, and they really help me. We need to watch for the good, the blessing that God is doing in every situation whether it's a severe illness or a death or a loss of job or a family squabble or just teaching the Sunday school class that I'm not prepared for or I've got to go pick up somebody and bring them to church. You know, or it's my wife. Linda takes care of, well, her mother is 92, still mobile and so forth, but she needs a lot of help. And so she takes care of her, and I take care of my aunt, and my other sister now are helping there. But she has to take her to the store, do this, do this, do this. And sometimes, as you know, it becomes a drudgery. They call up, you know, well, when are you going to come and see me? Well, I was just there yesterday. So it's like she doesn't have any other life or responsibilities. But that's a test. Go through these five things and wind up here, all right? God's going to bless me. I want to see what he's going to do out of this. And so we watch for those instead of the bad stuff. And uh, I just think we need to keep track. Uh, the, like Psalm 92 works, the Joseph story works, First Peter 5. I had to go to Romans 8. Let's go to that. We'll close with this. You're familiar with it. And honestly, I don't mean to insult Nothing of what I said today is uh, probably new to any of you. Maybe a different take on a passage or so, but you could, if you thought, and you might organize it differently, but that's the way it works for me and how I went through it. This, I think, I didn't check, may have come out when I did that funeral for that 17-month-old boy that drowned. That was the worst, not the worst, the hardest funeral I'd ever had to do. And out of that, I had to, that's the one. <laughs> I had to develop some ideas here. What can we focus on? Okay, I'm just, it's, this is a great passage. Let's, let's start, the one you all know. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now that's one for believers, but maybe I'm wrong here, but I think the addition, those that really love God, not just every flaky Christian that wants God to work everything out for them. <laughs> now, maybe that sounds more legalistic, I don't know, but somewhere you've got to, you know, it goes two ways on this thing. Uh, those who love God, well, everybody's a Christian has some sort of love for God, and those who are called all Christians. Well, maybe so. I think the context is more. You've got to be following him. Uh, it doesn't mean he's going to lose you if you're not, but we can depend on him working things together for good if we want him to. And we look to him. And we love him. Uh, if you remember the... I'm sorry. We've got to get over here over time. Um, you young men, don't do as I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> what I, when I teach this in Ukraine, not this topic necessarily, and I teach these guys, you know, a lot of, number of things. Uh, one, uh, say what the text means. Or first, what does the text say? What's it mean? And then what am I supposed to do with it? Simple things. And then I remind them, stay on your text. Don't go all over the place. We have a tendency. You know, you want to tell everything you know in 20 minutes. And you stand out here, what in the world was this point? Or points? <laughs> We've had, what, 25 conferences in Spokane? More, really, maybe. And I've listened to a lot of people, and some of those I go, I don't know, why am I punishing my people so much? <laughs> you know? Stay on. 
watch the clock and all these things. So, uh, you got some extra there. But uh, to those who love God, to those, for those whom he foreknew, he predestined or predesigned to be conformed to the image of his son, spiritual maturity, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. I mean, Christ is, of course, the firstborn, the head, the first one, and he's the one we, uh, he's our example. Many passages on that. These he, whom he predesigned, predestined, he called, whom he called, he justified, whom he justified, he glorified. In other words, our security in there from start to finish. And we're thankful that for us, he works things for good. He brings good from the bad. Blessings when we may think are cursings. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? It's easy for us to do, but when we get and say, God, how could you do this to me? How could you let this happen? What we're saying is that it's harder for him to take care of us than it was for him to deliver his son. He did the greatest for us. And we need to. This sounds corny. Give him the benefit of the doubt. I mean, that's stupid. God has created everything. And sometimes we don't even do that. You know? And then the rest of this passage, as you know, goes through. Nobody can separate from love of God. Many of you know, some of you, my son Titus. Titus will be 27 in about two weeks. Right now he's in Israel. Uh, working with cold water media. <clears throat> I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the drive through history program. Cold Water Media has put out, I don't always focus on the family's part of it or not. He's done some other stuff for them too. He has done the research for the Israel part. And they took him to the filming training. And so he's over there right now. In fact, he's already been in Israel once this year. He's there for three weeks. And, uh, but that's what he does, biblical archaeology. He has really grown. I've been amazed, as I told the people, of our three children. Thank God they've all done great. He was, if anyone was a little trouble, he was, gave us a little more headaches growing up. And he's the guy that surpassed me in doing all this stuff now. Well, sometimes he doesn't plan ahead quite as well as he should. His plane was set to leave at 1 o'clock from SeaTac to meet up with the crew in Tel Aviv right after I got a phone call about 9.15 on Tuesday morning, same day. He's supposed to leave in about four hours. Dad, is my passport over there? <laughs> <laughs> we looked, I looked, Linda looked, we went up to Luke's house, looked in the cars because he'd been with us you know, the previous weeks. Couldn't find anything. Katie, who he was staying with, my daughter and her husband, she found his old one. But it had already been punched, and because you know, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> what do you do? I've got this plane reservation. These people are going to be waiting for me. We've got to start filming all of this stuff. And, well, I, we, you know, these kind of things I've talked to you about. Well, what's God going to do? Look for the blessing that comes out of this. How is He going to do it? So, it became pretty evident that he was not going to make the one o'clock flight. So, call passport control. Call uh, whatever the services, passport services. Uh, he called and said, well, if you can get this stuff to us today, all the paperwork, we can probably have you a passport by tomorrow. Now, that's pretty fast if you've ever been through this. Okay? And I guess they need an appointment. But he went down there that afternoon. He walked in. Do you have an appointment? No. No. Well, you're lucky. We just have it open right now. <laughs> so within five minutes, he was in and out of there, passport all set, ready to go. Come back tomorrow at 2. We'll have it. Well, God worked good out of that. Now, I still don't know why the delay, probably one thing to teach him to pay attention. <laughs> but... We may find out that that was good, that he was uh, 36 hours behind everybody. I don't know. But the Lord is going to work something good out of that. Bless him. See? It's not what we wanted. It's not what he wanted. 
If you ever travel much internationally, it's a headache. And if you don't have passports, and even if you have them, you're up enough sometimes going through all the customs and passport checks. But uh, he arrived there about 3 o'clock in the morning today, and he should be, what time there, 10 hours, no, that's West Coast time. And so uh, that worked out, and we shall see. To me, if nothing else, it illustrates what I've been trying to express here. Say. Am I a believer? Well, that solves the bigger things. Okay. Do I really know who God is? Do I trust Him? Can I rely on Him? Okay. Well, Titus knows a lot of Bible. Do I, is what I believe more real to me than the circumstances I'm in? Okay. And we can ask ourselves that. Am I living the Christian life using however you like to do it? I call this sort of a checklist, not brown stuff. And then am I watching for these blessings to come out of that? And that's, uh, at least for me, it helps a lot. So uh, I apologize for taking more time, I guess, than we had, but this is where we are. Um, I sure appreciate the opportunity to talk with you folks and good audience. You have a really wonderful building here and good people to fill it. Yes, really, really enjoyed it. I'm glad I came down. I wasn't so sure can I fly this quick. One thing, though, I said, I better because Bob comes up there quite a bit. I can't just. <laughs> <laughs> but it was well worth it. And then meeting a lot of you people and some of my old friends in the ministry, and you learn, I learned things today. So we have. Can I ask you to stand as we close in prayer and then I'm going to have your song leader, and yeah, Doug, come up, and we're gonna, I'd like you to remain standing, we'll sing How Great Thou Art. Focus our attention on the Lord, what He's done. For you. Our Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We want to love you, we say we love you, and we sure appreciate who you are, what you've done for us. Thank you that you are our Father, and all that that means. And then the pattern we can learn from that as far as earthly fathers. Thank you that you're our God. Thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to indwell us and control us. Thank you for the Scripture. We ask you to build us in the faith. We want to please you. Thank you for taking us through many things, and especially for those who have been such hard tests. We pray for them, the ones going through them right now, that you might demonstrate to them, and they will take it with the eye of faith, that you are a creator, the one who blesses, the one who holds all things together. And so we say thank you for your loving kindness, for your faithfulness, for yourself. When we pray in your son's name, amen.